Welcome to another tutorial and this one is a big one. It's a power query that takes multiple Excel workbooks and all of the sheets from those workbooks and then consolidates that into a single table. So this is a how to consolidate data from multiple workbooks from multiple sheets into a single table. Now what we're going to do basically is we're going to do a base query on a single sheet where we will teach Power Query how to deal with those sheets. Now, we're going to have to be really careful here because we need to make a query, let's say, as loose as we can. Now, the reason we're doing that is so that we can basically have something like this. So we can have a single file that has, so this is for 2019 and therefore the actual has all the months in it, right? And that is the sheet actual array C from file 2019. But then in file 2021, we only have six months up to now, right? So if we're going to do any magic on those columns, we shouldn't have a step that says something like column August is an integer, right? Because that one will fail on the 2021 file. So we need to be really careful while constructing this base query. But once we have this down, we're going to turn it into a function. Now that's probably the, the most difficult part of this whole process but it's also the coolest part of this whole process and if you can create custom functions in power query you can do anything and we'll create a function that will have two variables or actually two arguments first one will be a file path and the second one will be a sheet name now once we have a function that takes a file path and a sheet name and then does all the magic that we want it to, what we're going to do is we're going to send that function through the entire folder of files where we're going to say, take each and every file in this folder, take each and every sheet from each and every file in this folder, and then build me a consolidated table. That's all that we're going to do. Okay, so let's start. We're going to start off by simply doing this. We're going to start off by going to a blank Excel file. So we start off by doing data, get file or get data from file from workbook. And we're going to start off by 2019 import. And that's the, that will be our base query. So now we're creating a base query and we can take any one of these sheets. So they all have departments and months, but they do vary. Whereas forecast has all the months down to December and four departments An actual has five departments and also down to December. So we're going to take the actual, we're going to say transform. And we're going to be really careful as to what's happening and already so it created four steps. First one is source, that's the file. Second one is navigation, that's which, which sheet is it's working on. And then it realized, well, these are headers. So it promoted the headers, that's also cool. But then it did this, change type. And this is something we definitely don't wanna see because what's in here is take August, for example, and turn it into an integer type. Well, August, will not be present in every file. So this kind of step, we need to delete that step immediately. Now, I'm not gonna go far into, you know, uh, everything that we could do here. I'm just gonna do a simple right click on the first, on the department uh, column, and I'm just gonna say unpivot other columns. So we're gonna get department. I'm gonna rename this to month and I'm just going to leave this as value, 
right? So this will be my final result. This is a base table, uh, a base query. We don't need to make it fancy because that's not the point of this. But now we need to create a function of this query. Now, what I would recommend you always do is this. You take your base query, you rename it into something like H as a helper, FN as in helper for a function, and then I'll say Excel sheet. So it's a helper query for a function on an Excel sheet. And now I'm just going to right click it and I'll say duplicate this. And with this second one, I'm going to get rid of the H. So this will be my function. So that's FN Excel sheet now. And now I go to the advanced editor. And all I need to do in here is I need to figure out how to change this start of it. And how I'm going to change it is this. Brackets equals and greater than. That's all you need. That is now a function. And now what do I want that to be a function of? Well, it's going to take two parameters. First one will be file path. And the second one will be sheet name. Now parameters could also include as text, as table, or whatever you want. If you want to define the type, I'm rather going to leave it like this because then para query has more wiggle room, if you will. Um, and, but now I also need to do this. So take the file path, whatever it will be. And I want you to use it instead of this hard coded file path over here. So I'll get rid of this. And instead of that, use the file path and then use the sheet name. All right. Instead of this. All right. It's not going to be hard coded as AC or actual. It's going to be whatever the sheet name argument of the function is. So this is where you need to be kind of careful. So at this point, this and this needs to be exactly the same because power query is case sensitive. You really need to be careful here. These really need to be the same. Okay. And in the end, you can just check down here. If it says there's a syntax error, then you go check it. But if it says that no syntax error have been detected, you just say done. And now this is a function. And now what is this function going to work on? Well, this is where it gets interesting. We're going to create a new query on a folder. Now, which folder will it be? Well, it will be exactly. Oh, I copied something else. Okay, let me then just go manually. So new query, file, folder. It's much easier now with the new interface because the last interface was not good. And with this interface, we can easily go into YouTube videos. We can go into Excel's and then folder. So this is the folder where our all of our files reside. So if I go open, it's going to list all the files within that folder, which is great, right? So now what I want to do is I want to transform this. I'm not going to go combine because I already have the function that's going to combine that. I just need to start with this and wiggle it around. So it's exactly what I need. And every time you're doing a query from a folder, these are the first two things you do. The first one, the extension, you first make it transform format uppercase or lower. But what you're, what you're going for is everything is either uppercase or lowercase. And then you're going to go filter text filters equals. And you're going to go, this should equal dot X L S X. Now, we only need the Excel files. It seems funny we're doing this, but if somebody copied a JPEG into that, it would fail miserably, whereas now it will not. And here's another thing you need to do. Another thing you need to do is you need to go to the name column. You need to go to the filter, say text filters, and then say does not begin with and go for a tilde. 
So this gets rid of all your temporary files. If somebody opens up Excel, it's going to shoot up a temporary file. It's going to start with this and then go into a strange name. What you need is to remove those because otherwise you're going to get duplicates. You're going to get twice the content of that file. So now nothing really changed, but we did tremendous work here. So this was great. And now we're going to do this. The only thing that we really need are the folder path and the name columns. And I'm going to select them in this order. So folder path, control, name. It's very important you select it in this order. Now you go right click, remove other columns, and now those two will align exactly as you've selected them. And now I'm going to select both of them and I'm going to go transform and merge columns. So I'm just going to merge them together. And what that is, is my file path. Now, there's no need for naming this. Uh, in a sense, my function would work even if I didn't name it as file path, but it's good to have it named exactly as it should be. So these, this is my file path, but now how will I get the all the sheet names from each of that file? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a column. It will be a custom column. And what this one will do is it will say excel.workbook brackets file dot contents of well of whatever that one says like this like this let me drop that down go okay and this is now a table for each of these it's a table of all the content of that file and if I only take the two columns that I really need and those are the name and the kind. So which kind of item is it? Is it a named range? Is it a table? Is it a sheet? And the name of that item. Those are the two things that I need, right? Now, I need this second column only because I will filter by it and I'll say text filters equals and I need this to equal sheet. Again, it seems redundant at this point I'm just going to delete the column afterwards, but I got that filtered rows, right? It needs to be a sheet. Why did I do this? If somebody next year turns that into a table, I would have a problem because I would have sheets and tables now listed here. This is how I maintain an integrity of the data. I only take the sheets. And now I have my file path and this is my sheet name. What am I going to do now? I'm going to go at column invoke custom function. Which function am I going to invoke? Well, you never would have guessed it. I'm going to invoke my function. What is my file path? It's column file path. And what is my sheet name? Well, it's still going to be a column name, but this one will be just name. Okay. And now it will do its magic on each and every one of those sheets on each and every one of those files. And at this point, I just expand this to, well, actually to all of them, say OK, and that is it. That is a consolidated table. I don't really need the file path, or although I could use it for the, uh, for the year, right? So if I just do that quickly, I'll take this one, I'll say transform, I'll go extract, I'll go text, let's say text before delimiter, I'll go dot and I'll search from the end, go OK. And then I'll just say now do text after delimiter. And this time I'll go like this and again search from the end, go OK. And there it is. I'll rename this as year. And this is my consolidation table. I'll go close and load two. And I'm going to say a table on, well, let's say on a new worksheet. I'm only going to create a connection now because it's going to 
try to load both of them and I, I really don't need this one it was just a helper table now as far as this one is concerned I'm gonna load it to a table on an existing worksheet right there and go and that is it brilliant so I hope you enjoy that and I hope you have great ideas how to use custom functions not just for this but for other things in our query thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one